Come on in, come on in. Like I said, I just was trying to get this started also on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, so today we have an interesting topic. We have a very interesting topic. Um, blessings to you that are coming on in. Um, today we have a very interesting topic. Um, today, and I, I got to tell you about this dream that I had, but let's, let's get into a word of prayer. Um, as we begin, let's get into a word of prayer. So come on in, um, share those watching on Facebook. Um, come on in, share the broadcast. Um, those of you that are watching on um, Zoom, come on in. Let's go into a uh, word of prayer. Father, we give you all of the praise. Father, we give you all of the glory. Father, we give you all of the honor that is due unto your name. For there is no one else like you. Father, we give you all of the praise. For you are worthy. You are worthy of all of our praises. You are worthy of all of the glory. You are worthy of all of the honor. For there is no one else like you. We acknowledge you today as our Lord and our Savior. Father, as I come on Facebook Live today to do your will, I pray, Father God, that you will speak to your people. Father, I pray, O oh God, that they will have a receptive heart, that they will open up their ears, that they will open up their eyes, that they will be able to hear from you uh, today in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you. We glorify mm -hmm. you. We give you honor. We give you all of the praise that is due unto your name. For we understand and we know that there is no one else like you you we praise you father and i pray today that as your people come on in on this live feed as they come on in on zoom that they will be receptive mm -hmm. that they will open their hearts father god to what it is that you are saying to them uh today in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah somebody come on and say amen with me hallelujah hallelujah um, listen, so today I wanted to discuss with you um, the difference between and, 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 and their, uh, the topic for today during this class is what is the difference between religion, um, being religious and being spiritual. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask this question, what is the difference between being spiritual and being religious? There is a difference. And, and so today we're going to talk about it a little bit. We're going to break it down a little bit so that you will be able to um, understand it. And my prayer is that by the time you leave this Zoom class today, um, by the time you leave this uh, uh, page today, that you will come, come away with a better understanding of, of what it is to be spiritual and what it is to be um, religious. Uh, we're going to try to break this down um, for you to understand it. And so... Like I said, uh, I had a dream, and I, I as as I was um as I was studying last night, I was looking at some notes, and I was studying last night. As Zita sent me a, a a little reminder, I was already in the Word, and I was already studying, and um I was like, God, <laughs> I know I give this topic, and I know this is what you want me to discuss, but um what is it that you what 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 is it that you want me to say specifically? And so um, I started to do a little study and a little digging and, and, and I found some stuff and I just want to share with you um, today. Um, I always have a scripture to share with you. And so today, um, one scripture that I want to share with you that is going to be taken from Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verses 7. Amen. I'm not seeing your comments. Wonder why. Uh, uh, I'm not seeing your comments on um, Facebook Live. That is not. Um... Okay, there it is. Okay, and so today I just wanted to share um, this information with you today. Like I said, we're coming from uh, Genesis. Those of you are on Zoom, can you see me fine? I know it, the screen is a little dark. Um, if you can see me fine, just let me know. If you can see me just fine, because I don't want you to miss any of this um, today. Blessings, come on in. Blessings, come on in. Share the broadcast on Facebook as you begin to come on Facebook. Okay, thank you, um, Sha. Okay, thank you so much. As you come on in, share the broadcast um, with someone else. And um, those of you watching on Zoom, blessings, come on in. And so today, um, the scripture is taken from Genesis chapter 2. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. And I want to pull that up on my um, screen here. 
I'm going to be moving my um, 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 phone for a bit just so that I can read the scripture in your hearing. Hope that you can still see me just fine. Um, okay, and so Genesis chapter 2 verses um, 7, uh, verses 7, and it says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And then the man became a living being. And you may be wondering, okay, um, 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 prophetess, why are you reading this scripture? What does this have to do with religion? What does this have to do with what we are discussing today? And as we go on, you will understand why um, um, this scripture is so important. Amen. And so I want to give you the definition for spirituality. Um, like I said to you, I've been doing some study and I want to give you the definition for spirit, spirituality. And, and, and guess what? Getting all tongue, I'm, I'm tied here. Um, do not let me forget to, uh, to tell you about this dream because the dream ties into um, 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 this teaching today. Hey, the home of blessings. Um, it ties into this blessing today. But today I want to give you the definition for spirituality. But before we go into spirituality, I want to give you the definition um, for uh, spirit. What is spirit? Spirit, the definition or the breakdown or the simple form of it is basically saying it is the wind. It is the spirit. It is wind or it is breath. And if you go and you look it up in Hebrew, uh, spirit is pronounced ruha, ruha, that, that's R-U-A-H, amen, R-U-A-H, ruha, and it basically means the wind or the breath of God. Amen. It means the wind or the breath of God. You'll understand why we use Genesis chapter 2 and 7 in a moment. And so it ruah, it means the wind or the breath of God. Amen. Um, what is wind? Wind is basically the force that moves you or propels you. Amen. Wind is a force that cannot be seen, um, but it moves you or it can propel you. You see it in the trees in the way that they sway. You see it um, um, when things are on the ground or probably you know a, a paper or, 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 or something how it flows you see it um, um, based on how a plane flies they, they, they basically got to know how much miles the wind is blowing and they got to know in which direction in order for them to mile, um, land properly and carefully and safely and so wind plays a very important um, 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 role in our being and so wind is described as the force that moves it pushes or it propels you amen and then we want to go to breath amen what is breath breath basically provides you with life amen breath is basically life and you can describe blood as basically the substance of life also but today we're only looking at the wind or the breath of god and so the wind of god it propels you it it it, it, it it is a force that moves you or pushes you. And the breath of God is described as the life of God. I hope you're getting this this morning on the Zoom. It is the life of God. Amen. And so let's go back now to spirituality. What is spiritual spirituality? Amen. And y'all bear with me. <laughs> spirituality. Spirituality is um, something beyond the physical world. Amen. It is the belief in something um, beyond this physical world. You cannot see it. You cannot uh, 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 literally touch it, but you know that it is there and it is something or the belief in something that is beyond something physical or of this physical world. Amen. Um, also, it's relating to deep feelings and beliefs, especially religious beliefs. Amen. Amen. Real, um, spirituality can also be defined as or relating to deep feelings and be and, be and, and, and beliefs, especially in religious beliefs or Christianity. Amen. And so uh, now that you understand the meaning of spirit and we break down the definition for spirituality. Amen. Let's move on. Uh, spirituality in its simple definition, can be explained as the belief in something or the belief in 
are God. And we have to understand with spirituality, a lot of persons may say that I am I'm not saved, I'm not a Christian, but I am spiritual. Amen. And I know um with this new age that we have in you know this modern times, we have a lot of persons that would say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not a Christian. I'm spiritual, but I don't believe in God. Amen. Um, 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 you would hear that a lot, especially with a lot of, um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, 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 oh Lord, what is the word I'm looking for? What is the word I'm looking for? Uh, a lot of, um, it's not coming to me, but a lot of, uh, persons be between the ages of, I would go from about say 35, 38 and down, uh, 40 and down. Um, 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 they are. Millennials, that's the word I'm looking for, Millennial, millennials. Um, you would find a lot of them would say, um, well, I'm not a Christian, um, I'm not saved, but I do believe in God. I believe that there is a God, and so I am spiritual. And so a lot of people don't want the connotation of saying that I am saved or saying that I am a Christian, um, but they are believing or they believe in a higher power. And so this is the this this is the the reason why I wanted to discuss this because you can go far left or you can go far right with this um definition because you can say yes I'm spiritual but you can say and I believe in a higher power but that high higher power may not be God may not be Jehovah let's be distinctive may not be Jehovah may not be Yahweh amen come on and share this broadcast it may not be Jehovah it may not be Yahweh it may not be the God of um, and I would say Christianity, it would not be the God that we believe in. And so when someone says that they are spiritual, uh, uh, first of all, you got to understand what are their beliefs? What are their core beliefs? What does God mean to them? And who is God to them? Because you can um, say that you're spiritual, but you can you may, may also be spiritual, but do not have a relationship with God. Prophetess. Is that um 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 can can that happen? Is that possible? It is very possible for someone uh to, to, to be spiritual but does not have a relationship with God. And all it means is yes, I do believe and I acknowledge that there is a higher power. Um, yes, I do acknowledge that there is a God, um, but um to to to, to, to say to pray and to fast and so forth, I don't do all of that. Amen. And so that is the difference between, um, um, not the difference, but that is somewhat the basic definition for spirituality. And we're going to break this thing down. Amen. Uh, uh, spirituality can also be described as a lived uh, relationship with God. And when I say God, I'm very careful to make sure that I mention the name of God so we can be specific on who we are talking about. Because there are a lot of gods, small g-o-d-s, amen? There are a lot of gods. There's this new age God, there is Buddha, there is Judaism, there's, there's so many gods out there. Amen. And so I am careful to mention Jehovah or Yahweh. Amen. And so it is a, a, a live relationship with God. When you say that you are spiritual and you have a relationship with God, it means now that you are practicing uh, 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 the, 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 a relationship, you have a practice, um, habit of speaking and communicating with God. And I hope that you are getting this this morning. Amen. I hope that this isn't confusing you. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible because one thing I've realized with truth is when you so used to believe in one thing, when, when someone comes about and try to change your perspective, it is very difficult to change the perspective or the mindset of people when they've been taught something for so long. And so I'm very careful to be specific with, 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 with what I'm saying, uh, with my pronunciation and with the names that I'm mentioning. I'm very specific and intentional with this so that you can understand um, um, this thing by the time we get off this um, live. Amen. And so it is a, uh, it can also be described as a live relationship with Jehovah or Yahweh. Amen. You can be spiritual, meaning that you have a relationship with God, 
or you can be spiritual, meaning that you believe that there is a God or a higher power, but you do not have a relationship with him. And so it is possible to be spiritual, but yet do not have a, a relationship with God. It is possible. Many people may say it's not possible to be spiritual and do not know God. A lot of persons are spiritual, but still do not have a relationship with God. Amen. They know that they, they, they acknowledge that he may exist or they acknowledge that there is a higher power, but they do not have a relationship with him. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day and I said to this person, I said, um, I, I, I am a Christian and I said, I honor my father, God, Yahweh. I honor him. That is my father. I said, now, when I was in the world, I honored my father, the devil. And I said um, um, to the person, and some people say, oh, that is so harsh. You honor your father, the devil. And it's, it clearly states that in the word of God, you can only serve one master. You cannot serve two masters. And so if you are not honoring or serving God, that means now that you are honoring and you are serving the devil. You can, all, you, can, you can use your members or your body as a vessel for God or as a vessel for um, 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 the devil to use. Amen? I digress. Let's get back. Amen? You can say that you are spiritual and acknowledge God, but you don't um, have a relationship or an intimate relationship with God. These are my little notes that I jot down. Amen? You don't pray, you don't fast, and, and, and the, the, the fruits of the Spirit are, are not evident in your life. Amen? And so this is um, the persons that say, you know what? I am spiritual. I do believe in God, but they do not have a relationship with God. And so therefore, um, they may not pray like they should. Um, they do not fast. Or they may not even believe in fasting. Or um, 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 the, the fruits of the Spirit are not visible or evident in their lives. Amen? And that's when um, um, you, you say that you're spiritual, but you don't have a relationship. Or you don't communicate with God. Obviously, the fruits of the Spirit, Spirit will not be evident in your life. Good morning to all of you that are coming on in. Amen? And so let's move on from um, um, the spiritual aspect of this teaching today and let's move on to the religious or the religion side of this teaching today. And, and before I break down religious, I want to just share with you what is religion. What is religion? Amen. Religion is... Religion, as we know it, a lot of us, we be familiar with the word religion and religious. Um, as um, the definition that I have here, religion is an organized group of worshipers or people um, who share beliefs and practices and a moral code. Amen. They have the same belief and practices and, they, and, uh, 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 and a moral code. Listen to this very carefully now. Uh, religion is an organized group of people or persons, doesn't this sound familiar, of people or persons that come together and or worshipers that come together to share um, um, a, a common belief or practices and a moral code. That is the definition for religion. Okay, uh, the word religion in, in the Latin um, 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 a word is pronounced as religion. It, 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 it just R-E-L-I-G-I-O, just religion or just religio. Amen. Yeah, however you want to pronounce that. That's how it's pronounced in Latin. And the definition for la, uh, 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 religio is bind together. I hope somebody getting this today is to bind together. And so we understand now that the definition for or the Latin definition for religion is to bind together. And so you understand the definition in English now when it says that it is an organized group of people or persons or worshipers that come together. It, they come together for a, a, a common uh, a good or a common belief. Amen. Or, or for, 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 for um, um, their belief or practices in a moral code. Or what is that moral code? Whatever that is that they believe in, they come together for that specific reason. And so we understand now 
now based on the Latin definition that religion means bind together. And so you find now that there are a lot of persons that are a part of a religion means that they come together for a common purpose. Amen. Meaning now the worshipers coming together for a um, um, um to share beliefs or practices and a moral code. Amen. And so um, 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 we figure we, you, um, you should understand now that these groups would come together. And since these groups or religion comes together, this is where it forms now the different denominations. My God. This is where now the different denominations are formed from religion. All of it is derived from religion. Remember now, religion binds a set of people together. And so you have a set of people, worshippers, that come together with a, a common belief. Come on. Saying, okay, this is what we believe in. This is what we will practice. And so this is how it's supposed to be. And so they come together and they form that group. And now they say, okay, this is how we will worship. This is how we will do it. Not basically, not um, I'm going by, you know, the laws of God per se, but um, coming together for their their beliefs and putting that thing together and saying, hey, listen, this is the way that we will do it. And so it forms now a denomination. Amen. And so that's where um, uh, Pentecost is derived. That is where Church of God is derived. The Anglican, Catholic, and, 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 and you have the Baptist and, you know, so much different religions and denominations are formed. Because everyone feels now that this is our own belief, this is our very own practice, and this is how it is. Amen? And so, we understand what is religion. Amen? And so, you may ask the question, Prophetess, um, so you're talking about religious. So, you said um, the definition for spirituality. You give me the definition for um, religion. What is this religious thing that you're talking about now? Being religious means now a set of people that come together for a common practice. What they practice in a set of rituals. My God, somebody, man, listen. I know this ain't no jumping message and this ain't no prophesying, but this is something to feed your spirit, to get you out of carnality into, come on, uh, 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 into the real, uh, uh, how can I say this, bread of life. Into just, you know, um, um, performing rituals every Sunday or every Saturday. And so being religious means that you're practicing a set of rituals. A set of things that you do uh, are, are based on religion or your denomination. Amen? And so uh, 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 when you're being religious, can you be religious and be spiritual? Yes. Can you be religious and, and not be spiritual? Yes. Amen. You can be spiritual, meaning that you have a relationship with God and still be religious means that you practice religion. That means you have not yet come into the full light or understanding of who God is. Also, you can be spiritual, meaning that, oh, I believe there is a God, but this is the way Grammy did it. This is the way Grandpappy did it. And so therefore, this is the way I'm going to do it. This is the way that my family did it. And so therefore, this is the way I'm going to do it. We go to church every Sunday and, and at nine o'clock, at 10 o'clock or at 11 o'clock, when we get to church, you know, we sing a few hymns. And after we sing a few hymns, we go into a, to, to a little praise and worship. After praise and worship, we collect the offering. After we collect the offering, then we go into the word. And then we go after the word, then we church out. All of it is just a set of, of, of practices or a set of rituals. Something that we just practice doing over and over and over and over again. And so you find um, 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 it's more, it's, 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 it's prevalent in every religion because all of them have, have a set of tradition and, 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 and rituals all. So I'm not saying, oh, she's only picking or talking about the Catholics or she's only talking about the Anglican. No, prophetess is not only talking about the Anglicans and the Catholic. But you can, you can see it clearly 
with Catholics and Anglicans because, you know, they have the crucifix, they have their Hail Mary, they have their, you know, their crosses and, and so forth. They have their incense. And so you see the rituals. They come in and they, they do what they got to do. Everything is in order, you know, based on their rituals. This is what they do. This is the tradition. And so they follow this tradition and it becomes a ritual. Amen. And so um, 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 at certain times or at certain seasons, they would have certain seasons where, OK, at this season, it is um, 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 what do they call it? Ash. I believe it's ash, 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 Sunday, ash, whatever, something, you know. And so everyone has their specific ritual or tradition that is passed down from generation to generation. Now, can you um, um, go to church and be religious and, and not be saved? Yes. It's very possible. It happens in the Bahamas every day. You have a lot of persons that go to church every Sunday, every Saturday, but they are not saved. And when I say saved, do not have a Holy Ghost filled relationship with God. The fruits of the spirit are not evident. They are not evident in their lives. Amen. And you can tell the persons that have a true relationship with God because our, our services don't run as usual. I'm getting in trouble today. <laughs> a person that is not religious, they don't go by order. And when I say order, I mean as in, okay, now we will sing. Now we will bow. Now we will stand up. Now we will pray. No, no, no. It is run by the Holy Spirit. It is run by God. And so whatever God says is what how it is how the service goes. And so you would find now, or how do you differentiate um, um someone that is religious versus someone that is, you know, full of the Holy Spirit is that one will go by tradition and rituals and one will follow the protocols of God. Whenever God speaks, they move. Haven't you ever been to any organization where, um, man, you fill up the Holy Spirit, you fill up the Holy Ghost, and you, man, you feeling this thing, and you, you worshiping, and you feeling this thing, and everybody else around you looking at you like you done just lost your mind? Everybody looking at you like you gone crazy? I could remember I been to, I been to this um church. Man, listen, and I and, I, and they, they doing their little thing, and I got in and I started to worship, and I started to worship. Man, listen, when I opened my eyes, you know, the people was looking at me, and you know, and some of them was sucking their teeth and doing their eyes at me. You know, those mucka mucks and their little hats, and you know, and so forth. They looking at me sideways with little glances. Let me tell you how this this woman right here did not care. And, and that's how you tell. That's how you can see the difference. Because there is absolutely no way that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you begin to worship or you begin to sing a song to your father. Or you begin to, you know, um, um, just feel the spirit of the living God and not react. Or you suppress it. And you find a lot of ministries, they suppress the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit is no longer a part of that ministry. And so what you have, you have a place of tradition and ritual. You have a religious meeting. My God, I hope you're getting this today. And so you have a religious meeting. It has nothing to do with Yahweh. It has nothing to do with Jehovah. It has nothing to do with Yeshua. Amen. And so people of God. And so if you take a group of people who say that they are spiritual and a group that are uh, people that say that um, 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 they, they feel a connection with each other and to God, they join forces and, 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 and join forces, they then become a religion. Example, Pentecost, Baptist, Anglican, Catholic, and when, um, 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 whatever I already spoken to you um, before. Amen. And so we understand now that this is how denomination was formed. And so what is all of this doing? It's creating a divide, separation. And this was never God's plan. It was never his plan for his church to be separated. Amen? It was never his plan for um, his people to be divided. It was never God's plan. 
Amen. It was never God's plan for a group of people to be over here worshiping another group down there and another group down there. And this group don't want nothing to do with that group. And you can't visit this church and you can't go there and you can't do that. That was never God's plan. It was never. This thing came into play a few years ago where, you know, I guess the Roman Catholics decide that, okay, everybody could come up with their own denomination and everybody could do what they want to. Once you have your own beliefs, everybody could do what they feel like doing. This came into play a few hundred years ago. But if you are spirit-led, Meaning that you are led by the spirit of God. Meaning that you are led, led by the spirit of Jehovah. Meaning that you are led by the spirit of Yahweh. Tradition won't mean a thing to you. As a matter of fact, it'll upset you. I don't put my notes up. I, I'm, I'm done for today. A person that is led by the Holy Spirit. A person that is full by the, filled with the spirit of the living God. They, tradition... There's no tradition when it comes to a person that is led by the Spirit of God. This is a fact. You cannot be contained. You cannot be. And this is the reason why I find that so many churches, they would put prophets of the church. Who I get in trouble today. That's why they would put people who are filled with the Spirit of the living God out of some churches. Or they basically run you out of the churches or they would call you Jezebel or they would call you renegade or they would say, oh, you trying to take over their church or, you know, you know, they would say little stuff like that. Why? Because you have a true relationship with God and you can see, you can hear what's going on. Because you are connected to the spirit of the living God. That means you don't follow tradition. And so they may come in and they want to sing three fast songs, three slow songs, and then they want to go and, and, and take up the offering. Then they want to do a prayer and then they want to, you know, go and preach for an hour or two and then church out. Maybe collect another offering and then church out. No. A person that is led by the spirit of God, tradition will not do. It does not satisfy you. Because the Holy Spirit wants to have its way. The Holy Spirit wants to reach people through a vessel. And so when you are not allowing your vessel to be used, then what the Holy Spirit do? He's a gentleman. He's going to say, okay, all right. You don't want me here. I'm going to go. And so a lot of these organizations are just religious groups. And so I guess that's all it is. The Spirit of the living God don't even pass by the door. Don't even pass by that church. All it is, is a set of people that gather together for traditional practices. And this is how most of us live our lives. We get up, we go to church on Sunday, we go to church on Saturday, and then you come home, um, you eat your Sunday dinner. You know how we Bahamians, for those Americans on the line, we Bahamians, we cook like peas and rice. You know, probably sometimes we cook two different types of meat. Um, you get your sides like macaroni, coleslaw, plantain, potato salad, you know. And, and you cook up a whole feast. And you have your Sunday dinner. And then, you know, for most of us, we either prepare for work and school the following, the next day. Or we go and we take our naps and prepare for work the next day. But were you affected by going to church? Did it bring about a change? Were you able to affect someone else? Did the message that was spoken that Sunday or that Saturday, were you able now to go back to your school, to your college, your university, back to your workplace, your, 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 your business? Were you able to apply that and bring about a, a, a change in your co-workers life, in your, in your, you know, your comrades life, you know, your fellow um, 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 students life? Is the fruit of the spirit visible? Are you growing spiritually? 
Meaning that you left from a place of just coming to church where you say, okay, now I'm just coming to church is not enough. Then you begin your prayer life. Then you say, okay, just praying once a day is not enough. You go into praying two, three times a day. Then you say, you know what? I, I'm not getting enough. I want more of God. Then you start your fasting. And as you start your fasting, you say, man, listen, I need more. And then you start your teaching. You start digging and researching the Bible. Are you growing? And so you understand that for many of us, we can say, yes, I believe in God. Yes, I'm spiritual. But do you have the spirit of God living on the inside of you? In second, in, in second um, um, Genesis chapter 2 and 7, what the spirit of God does now, and this is where it gets very interesting. Um, thank you for sharing. This is where it gets very interesting. And this is the reason why I said um, 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 we have to go back to this scripture where it says, then the Lord God formed man. I got to move the phone a little bit from the dust of the ground. And then he breathed. What does breathe mean? According to our studies today, it means it provides you with life. What does the wind of God mean? Because when he breathed into you, that is wind coursing through your vein. And what does the wind do? The wind now propels or push you. And so what does God, what did God did in second, in, in, in Genesis um, um, 2 and 7? What he did now is he breathed his life into you, which is the wind of God that will propel you. Come on. To go forward. And so now that God has breathed his life in you and propels you, what are you doing? The fruits of the spirit has to be evident. There's no way that you can have the breath of God on the inside of you and you do not love. It is impossible to have the breath of God in you and you do not have joy. You do not have peace. Come on. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to hate your neighbor and to hate your sister and to pass them straight in the ring when you have the wind of God, when you have the spirit of God, when you have the ruah of God. Somebody got to get this today. And so it is time for us now to give up the tradition and the rituals and now become spirit led. Be sons and daughters of God. Amen? My God, this is blessing even me today. Because now we've gotten, we've gotten to this place now where we've become so religious. Daddy did it this way. Mommy did it this way. My sisters and my brothers did it this way. And so therefore, I'm going to do it this way. We are traditional in all things. Oh, mommy, vote this way. Daddy, vote this way. And so therefore, I'm going to vote this way. But what about the effects on the country? What about the effects of, 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 that it will have um, 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 on your life, your children's life? My Grammy been going to this church from, you know, 30 years ago. 40 years ago, my, my mother went to this church, and so therefore I'm going to the church. But this pastor that molested half the children inside the church, but yet you still there. The Spirit of God isn't there anymore. Why are you still there? Tradition? Rituals? Who am I speaking to today? I didn't come to ruffle no feathers, but as a prophet of God, that's what I do. I jolt you, resuscitate you, give you a shock back into reality for you to understand that the way you've been doing it and been calling it, you know, me being a Christian, I'm saved and, you know, I go to church every Sunday and no, no, no. Some of us, we need to reconnect. Some of us need to have a Genesis a, a Genesis experience again where God places us in the garden and breathe life back into us. Woman of God, how am I supposed to do this? Go back years and years and years and years and for God to breathe life into me. How can I do that? No. It happens every day. You don't even have to do anything. You no, no tradition, no um, um, ritual. All you got to do is say, God, I surrender. I've been doing this thing the wrong way. Now, God, 
Yahweh, I invite you in my life. Teach me how to do this thing the right way. I acknowledge Yeshua, Yeshua, as my Lord and my Savior. I acknowledge that Yeshua came and he died for me. And you know what's happening? What's taking place? A Genesis experience. Where now the Ruah, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, the wind of God is now being placed on the inside of you. And so this is why we call it reborn. You are now born again. You now become a new creature in God. Amen? Welcome, welcome. You now become a new creature in God. And so what does this mean? No longer do you follow tradition. No longer do you follow rituals. But you are now free. Come on. You are now free. And so now you become an open vessel to the spirit of Yahweh. Now you move when God tells you to move. And so with this, with this study, it caused me to understand why I never belonged. It caused me to understand why I couldn't belong to one organization. It caused me to understand why I was never fitting in. It caused me to understand why they didn't want me around. And I know many of you, you're feeling that way right now. And now you, you, you should understand the reason why you felt uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. the, now you understand why you just could not sit in that church and just be still. Now you understand. Because now you're coming from a place of being religious to, 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 to a spirit-filled life. And so the difference of, of being spiritual and being religious is one having to deal with ritual and tradition and one having to do with being having a relationship or a connection with God. When you have a true connection with God, it's impossible to be religious. When you have a connection with God. And so therefore now, Choose this day which choose, choose ye this day. If God be God, then serve God. You cannot have two masters. And so guess what? I'm done. <laughs> this teaching is about this teaching is done because there's absolutely nothing else to say. Is it, it really isn't anything else to say. And so we have to now come out of this mindset of doing things the way that man has ordained it. The way that man tell you to do it. The way that an organization tell you to do it. Oh, if you don't do it this way, then you can't fit in. Oh, if you're not ordained, then you can't preach. Oh, if you're a female, you can't do this. That's man's way. Not God's way. Oh, if you don't have it, your hair fixed a certain way, you can't be a pastor. If you don't dress a certain way, you must not be a pastor. If you cut your hair a certain way, you can't be a prophet of God and look like that. You can't come from the ghetto and look like that. <laughs> but God. When you have the Ruah, the breath of God, the wind of God in you, it does not matter where you came from. It does not matter your background. It does not matter your inherit and your, um, uh, the heritage, what you call it, the, 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 where you descending from. It does not matter. You can be a Jamaican. You can be a Haitian. You can be an American. You can be an African. It does not matter. Once you allow or you make yourself available for the Ruah, for the breath of God to be breathed into you. No longer will you be held captive. No longer will you be a slave to sin. No longer will you be a slave to, to tradition. No longer will you be a slave to rituals. Mm -hmm. Because now your eyes will become open. And you will understand, hey... Um, 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 incense and stuff like that. No, that's not going to save me. That's not going to cost me to get in church. 
wearing a long robe and, and all of no that, that that's not coming to serve save my soul. Being, being, being there and singing three fast songs, three slow songs, and then, no, that's not going to save your soul. Being the church on, on a Saturday instead of a Sunday, or a Sunday instead of a Saturday, that's not going to save your soul. Being an Anglican or being a, um, a, a Catholic or being a Jehovah Witness or being a, a Baptist or a Church of God, Pentecostal, that's not going to save your soul. All of these are man-made religions and traditions. All of them are religions formed by man, not by God. There's nowhere in the Bible you will find a church of God, a church of God of prophecy. There's nowhere in the Bible you're going to find an uh, Anglican church. There's nowhere, nowhere in the Bible you're going to find God saying, okay, form a Catholic church. Nowhere. However, you know, the Pentecost might say, Pentecost is in the Bible. Yes, it is on the Bible, but Pentecost was a, 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 a Jewish or Hebrew celebration, a time, not a church. The Bible clearly states on the day of Pentecost. And so it was a time or a season or, or something that they celebrated, like how we celebrate Christmas. It was a day. And so nowhere in the Bible that you see God separated his people and say, okay, you be a Catholic, you be Jehovah Witness, you be this. But he did say, the Bible did say that when God breathed the ruah, the wind, the breath into man, man became a being. And that man, that man was created to worship the true and living God, who is Yahweh, Jehovah. And so people of God, I hope that this teaching was a blessing to you today. I hope that when you leave this feed today, when you leave this Zoom today, when you leave YouTube, when you leave this Facebook Live today, that you, you come away with the knowledge that, hey, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm choosing today not to be religious. I'm choosing today to be spirit led by the spirit of Yahweh. Amen. Because a lot of us we have uh, where we would say, um, um, uh, I, I believe in God, but which God are you believing in? And I, I, I made it a point to mention Yahweh. I made it a point. To mention Yeshua and not just Jesus and not just God. Because I believe now that we are in a season as I hear the spirit of the living God speaking to me. I believe that we are in a season now where we are in a great awakening. Where the spirit of God is opening the eyes of the people of God. Where he is opening the eyes of the people of God and many things that was hidden for years and years and years and years. God is now causing his people to become awakened and causing his people now to see. And so now we're coming to the full understanding and the knowledge of who God really is. Who Yahweh really is. And so now it is this great awakening and and. You would find at every dispensation, every, say, 50 years or every 100 years, there would be a great awakening that will birth a revival. And so I believe that we are at the, 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 the beginning of this, this, this thing where there is about to be a shift in this atmosphere, where there's about to be a shift. In this planet where there's about to be a shift in the atmosphere where the sons of God, the daughters of God are about to rise up with the truth. Now people will call them crazy. People will call them foolish. People will say that they blaspheming. People will say that this is not of God. People will even say it's heresy. 
Why? Because they won't want to see the truth. They won't want to believe the truth. It's for many of us, for years and years and years and years, we believe and I, I we believe that we had a, a <laughs> we believe we have a, a, a circle world. But in the Bible, it clearly states the four corners of the earth. If it is a circle, it cannot have four corners. Okay, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. And so what God is doing now is he's causing the remnant. He's causing now his sons and his daughters' eyes to be open. What did God say? And he, he was prophesying. He was speaking prophetically. He said, in the last days, he says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Come on. And he says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And so now we see in this thing taking place now. And so God is causing his people now to remember his name. His true me name. Not just what we were taught by man. Because when they translated the Hebrew or the Latin, when they translated the Hebrew, come on. There are some words that they left off and there's some words that they manipulated. And so the things that we believe in for years and years, our parents believe in it. Pastors teach on this thing for years and years. The other day I was, I was, I was, I'm, I'm sitting down and I begin to pray and I was like, God, forgive me because there were a lot of things that I taught. There were a lot of things that I said that really, it was only because that's what I was taught by other people. Not because this is what you said to me. And so I had to go back and I had to ask God to forgive me. God, I taught this to people. I said this to people. God, I believe this for myself. Until God began to open my eyes and shed some light. I began to say, go and look at it this way. Go and look at it this way. Go and study this and point things out to me. And then I'm like, <gasps> but you have to be willing to have your eyes, your ears, and your heart open to the truth. And once you begin to accept the truth, then a lot of things will begin to make sense to you. Relationship is key, Pam. A lot of things will begin to make sense to you once you step out of religion. Because all religion is a tradition, you know. You do it this way. Do it that way. Do it that way. Don't venture out of the line. Stay right here. Do it just like this. And everything will be cool. But what God is doing now is he's causing his sons and daughters' eyes to be open to the true God. And once you have the spirit of God, God will begin to deposit. The more you seek him, the more he will give you. The more you seek him, the more he will give you. The more you seek him, the more he will give you. And that is the reason why many people like myself cannot fit in a Pacific organization. Can't. Can't. A lot of persons would ask me, um, what is your religion? I said, I have none. Who would the prophet say she don't have no religion? Yes, that's what I said. I don't have no religion. I have no denomination. My ministry, when I had my um, um, church that God, you know, told me to open up in Abaco, when we had the church, people would say, um, what's the denomination of your church? Non-denomination? No, we don't have a denomination. This was a church or a building that people come together to worship Yahweh, where the Spirit of God led. There was no plan. There was no agenda. You were not forced. You were not told. This is what you have to do. Let me tell you something. When I got saved, there were certain things that I liked to wear because I was small and petite. And, you know, I was always a small person. Not now, but I was always a small person. And so because I was a small person, my sister's on the line and she could attest to this. I love to wear mini skirts and I love to wear tank top because my stomach was flat. You know, and no marks on my stomach. And even today, I have two kids and I still have a beautiful stomach. <laughs> you know, no stretch marks, nothing. 
And so when I was younger, my 17, 19, 20, 25, yes, I would love to wear tank tops because I had a nice stomach and I wanted to show it. But as I, when I got saved, it wasn't, I was like, go tell you come as you are so I could still dress how I want to dress. But as I matured in God and in the spirit of God, he started to teach me, oh, you can't dress like that. Oh, you can't wear that pants. Oh, you can't, no, uh-uh, that's not, no. And so it came to the point where the Holy Spirit didn't even need to talk to me anymore. If I put on something and I'm going somewhere, I would feel so uncomfortable to the point where I was like, you know, I need to leave or I just need to go and change. And so I would tell people, when people say, oh, um, you can wear this and don't wear this and don't wear that, I said, Whenever I put on something or I wear something, if I am convicted by the Holy Spirit, I will take it off. I don't care what it is. If it's a lipstick, if it's a ma if it's makeup, if it's a pants, if it's a shirt, I don't care what it is. If I am convicted by the Holy Spirit, I will take it off. If I am not convicted, no man, no woman can come and tell me, oh, you're a pastor, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. Because if you are led by the Spirit of God and truly led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God won't have you coming out looking like a fool. And so there's no way as a pastor that the Holy Spirit would allow me to wear a mini skirt and tank top and talk when I go and go preach somewhere. Impossible. Religion, spirituality. And so people of God, I pray that this was a blessing to you. Good to see all of you. I love you for watching those of you that are watching on Zoom. I love you. Blessings to all of you. Um, I hope that this bless you. Those of you watching on Facebook, I love you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. There are some things that we have in the pipeline that are coming. Listen, there's so much things that the Holy Spirit just downpoured. I can remember sometime, year before last and last year, my prayer was, God, give me some ideas. God, give me ideas. God, give me ideas. I want some genius ideas. Ideas where I don't have to work for man anymore. Hey, Chantel. And I'm like, God, give me some ideas. And now God giving me ideas left, right, and center to the point where I'm like, whoa, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, there are some things that are in the pipeline. There are some things that we that I am doing. Um, there are some 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 ideas that God give me to put on paper. There are some things that God tell me to do, and I'm trying to do all of those things and be obedient mm -hmm. to the Spirit of God because all of us want to get to the place where we are financially stable. And so I won't be on the Royal Bahamas Police Force forever. You know, um, um, I will retire. And so um, you want to be able to sustain your children in your lifestyle. You want to be able to be comfortable. And so therefore now um, uh, the ideas, you know, that God are depositing in my spirit. And to many of you, God is doing the same thing. He's giving you ideas, you know. He's telling you how to use your hands, how to use, you know, your gifting. And so guess what? God is positioning you. And so um, there are a lot of things that are in the pipeline. Go ahead, look out for them. Um, listen, continue to follow me on the um, um, ministry page, which is Walking Into Destiny live page. You can continue. Hey, Cash, how you doing? Miss you. <laughs> Ma, listen, I miss that good food. You used to cook there in Abaco. Miss it, miss it, miss it. Say hello to the kids for me. Um, and so... There are a lot of ideas that God are even given to you. And so what God is doing now is trying to position you to be in a place to be, you know, financially free where you're not a burden or a slave to, 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 to let me just say sin. Because, you know, when you don't have no money, sometimes we do certain things to get certain things. And so God is trying to move you out of certain positions so you can get to a place now where you don't have that burden. So you're free to worship, free to do what God tells you to do. For many of you, um, God is freeing up your finances in order for you to travel. For many of you, God is freeing up your finances in order for you to do ministry. God is freeing you up from your job in order to go into full-time ministry. And so this is what God is doing. And so... 
this teaching, I believe, was very beneficial to us today because now it's teaching us to come from a place of religion and tradition to a place where we are led by the Spirit of God. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you are now listening to God. And so when he tells you to move, you will move. When he tells you to sit, you will sit. When he tells you to speak, you will speak. And so therefore, that's where the blessing comes in. When you are obedient to the Spirit of God, that is where the blessings come in. And so right now, I'm at a place where, you know, I'm just loving on God. I'm just doing what he tells me to do. I'm just trying my best to be a willing vessel and be obedient. When he tells me to move, I move. Where he tells me to go, I go. And so um, 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 right now, I'm at a place where although the attack has been intensified, I'm also seeing the hands of God. Amen. Although the fight. I woke up yesterday and my eyes started to feel kind of funny. And for those of you that know, um, listen to um, this summer when I went to do um, the conference in Grand Bahama and my ordination, my eye just swole up. My eye was swollen. Why? Nobody could tell me. The doctor couldn't tell me. I knew it was an attack. You see too much. And so just um, yesterday I woke up and I said to my sister, Poi, listen, feel like my eyes um, 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 feel like that same thing happening to my eye again. And I started to get vexed in my spirit. And I'm like, but God, I tired, man, of these people messing with me. I'm tired. Why they don't just leave me alone? You know, and, and, and that's just then when the Holy Spirit said, they say that that's when the Holy Spirit whispered to me because of your sight. And so because you can see people don't like that. And it don't have to be sinners, you know. They Christians, they people who say they Christians. Yeah, Christians. You see too much, you dream too much. And so now they're trying to, you know, mess with my eyes. And so I I, I in the spiritual spiritual realm, I, I I just had to I had to put down a prayer. I really had to. I had to go and put down a prayer because um I just got tired, man. I got seriously, I, I tired. Why these people keep on messing with me, man? It's either these witches get saved or they die, man. I tie it. You know, I tie it. And so people of God, when you get to a place where, you know, you're being led by the spirit of God, you no longer follow tradition and religion. Amen. And so um, thank you for coming on in. I hope that this word was a blessing to you. I hope that this word was a blessing to you. I hope that you will take it and, and, and that you will use it in your life that you will begin to you know slowly come out of the place of tradition and religion into a place where you're being spirit led by the spirit of god and so people of god hey listen we're going to be in um fort lauderdale not fort lauderdale but we're going to be in florida um for the women on fire conference listen it's called women on fire because the women are on fire it's not a women's conference <laughs> It is called Women on Fire. That's why we say Women on Fire. Because it's, it didn't say Women of Fire. It's a Women on Fire. We, the women, the speakers, we are on fire for God. There's a fire that has been lit on the inside of all of us. And we just want to share it out. We just want to touch. We just want to share what it is that God is doing. And so listen, if you are... Um, interested in being at this conference it the tickets are available listen Zita has the link on her page the link is on my page it is also on Apostle Shamian Roberts page it is also on Prophetess Rochelle's page it is also on Prophetess um, 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 Hannah page you can go ahead and just go on Prophetess Natasha Hannah page you can go click on the link you can get your tickets. It's going to be in Florida. Um, at the um, I see this here. See, they can give you the information. I think the the hotel name is um 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 holiday. What what's the name? Holiday Inn? No, I think I'm saying the wrong thing. Something. But the the, the <laughs> hotel is in Florida. Um, the tickets are at the Hilton Inn. That's what it is. Thank you, Lahoma. Um, it is the Hilton Inn in um Miramar. Am I correct? Miramar. Um, um, and the, the the conference is going to be on the fourteenth of December. Listen, you can go ahead. That link. 
There's a link there. You can get your book, your hotel room, or you can choose to stay at another um, um, um place if you want to. You know, some people are doing Airbnb. Um, some people that are in um Florida itself, they carpooling. There are some people that are coming from upstate that are carpooling and driving together and coming to this conference. Listen, you do not want to miss this Women on Fire conference. It is going to be share fire. The fight came. Hilton Garden. Thank you, Tarika. Thank you. Hilton Garden. And listen. Oh, thank you, um, um, Trisha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, the dream that I had. <laughs> but listen, people of God, you don't want to miss this conference. If you have not yet um, purchased your um, ticket, go ahead. Purchase your ticket. Um, um, the ticket only, listen, the ticket is only $75. I don't know who just put on this type of event. For only $75 with five for profits, um, I'm giving you the word of God, full deliverance, food, which includes breakfast and lunch. I don't know who to do that for $75, but the woman of God, I don't know how she pulled it off, but she did it. Um, um, you're going to be in a nice, comfortable um, conference room in a hotel uh, where you're going to be um, 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 You registered. You get your goodie bags with all kind of good stuff in it. Let me tell you, good stuff. When I say good stuff, good stuff. I've never seen this before. Good stuff in your goodie bag. When you register, you come in. When you register in the morning, you get your goodie bag with all your good stuff inside of it. You get your notepads, your pen. Anyway, I need to give out all the stuff. And then um, um, you pay $75. That's for the whole day. From 7 to about 3 p.m., you have the profits right there. We're going to be there. And if you, um, listen, if you're staying at the hotel, you can go ahead and stay at the hotel. That way you have easy access to just come on down and get into the conference. And if you need to come on at any time during the day, you just rush in your hotel room and come right back. Um, um, we're going to have breakfast and lunch. You do not want to miss it. Listen. For what I see in the spiritual realm, all I see is just fire, 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 fire. That's all I see, fire. And so you do not want to miss it. For those of you that have already purchased your ticket, those of you that said that are flying in, listen. May God bless you. May God bless you. I'm sure that there's going to be a move of God in that place. Yes, the dream that I had. I woke up this morning and I, I was just about ready to go because I ain't ready to go find something to eat. I fasted for up until now. Um, uh, the dream that I had, I had a dream where um, the Lord take me to hell. <laughs> Would you believe I've been praying for that for years and years and years, but I was still a little apprehensive. I didn't really want to experience it. But um, um, in this dream, the Lord took me to hell. I was in hell. Literally, I was in hell. And um, while in hell, um, there was this man that was walking with me that I now, that I wake up, know is an angel. But um, there was a man that was walking with me and I was going to different locations in hell, in different places in hell. And as I was walking in different places in hell, I came to this place where I saw um, this person and they had on all white and they didn't have on their head. They was like sitting. I don't know. I don't recall if it was a wheelchair or just a pushing chair. You know, those chairs with the wheels. Um, 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 they were sitting there, but they didn't have no head. But you could tell the person was sitting there like, okay, all right. You know, this is just another day. And I'm looking like, God, what happened? Like, and I'm like, Jesus, what's going on here? And then after, as I was passing, I saw this group and the place was arranged almost like a church setting. All the persons had on white. Listen, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. All the persons had on white. And as I was passing, I saw pastors that I knew. In the spiritual, in the dream. The, I saw pastors in, in my spirit. I knew that I knew these pastors. Now, I did not say see faces. But in my spirit, I knew that I knew the pastors. And so I passed and I was like, um, um, hey, pastor. And the person said, and the pastor said, hello, prophetess. And I continued walking and I kept on looking because I, and as I was walking, I was looking back because it was like as if this pastor and this whole congregation was sitting in hell. And I'm like, what in the world is this? What in the world is this? 
And it was like these people was in hell and they doing the same thing over and over and over and again. And just as they were on the earth is how they were in hell. You, you know, sitting down in church and it's like they look dazed. You know, they look dazed like they like, like, like dazed. And when I wake up, I was like, God, what in the world was that? And then I remember the topic for today. The difference between spirituality and religion. And basically, that's what God was showing me um, in the dream. For, for, for those that, 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 you know, they go to church every day. They preach in the word. They, they dress in, you know, a certain type of way to say that I'm holy and, and, and this and that. But their heart was not with God or and it was horrible. I was like, God, I can't, I can't believe it. I, I cannot, I cannot believe it. Pastors in hell. Pastors with their whole congregation in hell. And so this is the reason why I, I, I mentioned to you, if you feel, if the Holy Spirit is telling you to get out of that place, get out. If you know the Holy Spirit is no longer in that place, get out. Because, I mean, this fellow was in hell with his whole congregation. That, that, that was scary to me. That, that, that thing was scary to me, people of God. It was really scary to me. And so, um, people of God, um, I believe that God was, you know, speaking to us reference to, you know, not having a form of godliness, but really, truly having the Ruah of God on the inside of us. The breath of God on the inside of us. It's time now for us to drop the religion. It's time for us to stop the tradition. It's time for us to stop. We got to know God for ourselves. Yes, truly, it was truly sad. It was really sad because I was like, God, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I, I cannot. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. And believe it or not, the experience that people say they have in hell, there was a certain part in hell that I went. The scent was atrocious. It was a. I can't even explain to you the scent. It was. Oh God! It was like um, because of my line of work, I usually go to the mall. Go. I have to deal with. You know, it was like the mall scent. Along with decaying bodies of animals, and you, it was like I can't describe it. I cannot describe it. It was horrible. The scent was horrible. But God didn't allow me to. I didn't see fire. I didn't see nobody getting burned up. I didn't hear no screams. I didn't hear. I didn't see enough. God just allowed me to see um, the persons who you know who who have a form of godliness but denying the power of god he just that's all he allowed me to see and so you know i don't know if i'll ever have an experience of, of of going to hell again i don't know but i can say that it's time to get out of religion it's time to get out of religion um it's time to wake up it's time to wake up yes 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 lulu yes like rotten, listen, rotten meat times 1,000. It was horrible. It was horrible. You know, and a lot of persons that, that usually go to hell, they have the experience of it. They see fire and this and that, you know, and so forth. But I didn't see that. That, that was not my experience. And, and, and you know, if, 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 if I'm ever allowed to see that, then to God be all the glory. But I am... I'm not looking forward to it based on what I just see with this man just sitting down with no head and just sitting there like, you know, it was just another day. I know. I, I don't know. You know, we usually ask for some things, but you know, you know. Mm -mm. Hey, listen. Yeah. Tradition won't get you into heaven. And so to save our souls, we got to get out of the, the, the religious arenas and so blessings to all of you have been here long enough um those of you that are watching on sos 
um, school blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. Those that are walking, watching on Walking Into Destiny Live, blessings to all of you. Continue to follow me on this page. For those of you, the the the, the all six thousand. Um, 7,000 of you that are following me on my Marvel Lewis page, listen, send your friend request to the Walking Into Destiny Live page um, where I can have more than 5,000 um, 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 persons on that page. Go ahead, follow me on Walking Into Destiny, Walking Into Destiny Live page. Or you can also find me on YouTube. You can just type my name on YouTube, Marvel Lewis, and you'll find me. You can type Walking Into Destiny, or you can type Marvel Lewis, and you'll find me on YouTube. Listen, blessings to all of you. Um, may God bless you. May God continue to bless you. For those that shared the broadcast, may God open the heavens, the, or the, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to contain, that you may be a blessing to others as you have been a blessing in sharing this message today. Thank you for coming on in. Blessings to you. Bye-bye, Facebook. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Facebook. Bye, YouTube. <laughs>